Hi, I just want to come to you quickly today with some thoughts around what's one of the pillars of success. And um, the, the pillar I wish to talk about right now is the ability to change and why it's important and what needs to be in place for change to happen, for change to be in place. So when we think about uh, successful people, they have a massive ability to, uh, to change, to react and adapt what it is they do to suit the situation they're in, the marketplace, the economics of that point in time, uh, the strategy that's been uh, given to them or the strategy that they've designed. And, and, and so that makes change and the ability to change and adapt um, one of the, the core pillars of, of success. In fact, for you yourself, your ability to change um, what you do, when you do it and how you do it, with whom and why you do it um, is going to uh, going to decide for you whether or not you achieve what it is you wish to achieve out of your life. Um, the, the sheer fact is if you carry on doing what you've what you're doing, you're going to keep on getting the same as what you've already got. And if you wish to have more than that, and it doesn't have to be more in terms of money. It could be more in terms of uh, free time. It could be the same money, but more time. It could be more uh, concentration on family and friends, um, but it could be money. It could be more status. Uh, it could be nicer clothing. It could be whatever it, it may well be for you. Something is going to have to change for you and in you for you to uh, decide to do it, uh, for it to actually become a reality and not only become a reality, but become a sustainable reality. You see, we quite often change, um, maybe with a degree of fear or motivation. Let's just say we change the way we eat, drink and exercise and sleep in order to lose weight. And we often know that that change becomes unsustainable because we see people who lose weight and then put it all back on again. Um, often double what they've lost, they put on within 12 to 24 months. Um, and, and that means that the, the factors that are required for change to happen um, are, are not present. They're not in, uh, they're, they're not, they're not in, in place. Now, there's lots of theorists out there around change. And if you've ever done an MBA or you've worked in a corporate setting, you'll have heard about change management and you'll have heard about maybe Cotter, uh, all sorts of people. And I'm not a big fan of some of that stuff because I don't believe it works. In fact, in my experience, it doesn't work um, or doesn't work to the level in which the uh, organisation or the person wishes it to happen on. The why behind of that is change is an individual human being behaviour. So we can't change manage the whole of a business unless we allow everybody, each individual person within the business to have these four things in place. If all the people in the business have these four things I'm going to talk to you about in a minute in place, um, then they will do their change and their change will then produce a organisational change in the business. In some of the theorists out there as well, they talk about, well, the environment has to be accepting or open for the change to happen. And, and they're true to a degree, but also not true to another degree. My experience is that if the four reasons I'm about to give you or four factors you need to have in place for change to happen is it are in place, the person will change whether or not the environment permits it or not. Now, if the environment permits it, they're likely to stay in the environment. However, if the environment does not permit it, they're likely to seek, find or create an environment that does permit it. I experience this um, all of the time when you find um, maybe executives who choose, choose to leave the workplace and go to maybe a new team or a new environment, or they choose to leave the corporate world altogether and work for themselves. That's because the, the, they are ready to change and make a difference. They're willing to do it in their current environment, but unless their current envir if their current environment doesn't permit it, um, then the, they will find an environment that does. 
So if we're a leader, um, uh, permitting and encouraging change and opportunity for growth for our workforces there. And the way we do that is by demonstrating our own ability to change at the same time and be congruent with what it is we're doing and where we're going. So let's look now at, at these four factors required for, for change to happen. So uh, number one is the individual human being needs to have a reason and or desire to change. They need to have their tipping moment. I found this recently with a, with a client in, in as much as uh, I was talking to him and I said, uh, we've both got little daughters. Uh, both about the same age. His daughter's a couple of months older than mine. Uh, mine and mine's 12 months old at this point in time. And, and I said to him, um, can, can you imagine age 10 or 11 or 12, your daughter's uh, at school and the kids on the playground say, what does your daddy do? How currently would you do you believe that your daughter would feel inside and say what it is her daddy does? He said one thing. I said, and is that how you wish for it to happen? He said, no, 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 no. I wish for my daughter to say, da, 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 da. And then we had the conversation around, um, well, what are we going to do differently to, um, to, to make the change? So your daughter does say what it is that you would wish her to. So that created a, a reason and a desire to change, a compelling one linked to his child uh, and how his child feels about him as a father. So that's number one, a reason and desire to change. Number two is a short-term reoccurring fear. This, uh, believe it or not, is, is um, or could be, um, and usually is, either financially linked on quarterly bonus or, um, or, or, or the thing that I will get fired if I don't achieve. We need both carrot and stick to change. We need to have the desire, the heart, the warmth to go forward. But we also need to know the consequences of, of not change. It could be if you're obesely, uh, obese and overweight that uh, the, the, the short term fear of a, a heart attack or a stroke or diabetes could be enough uh, or should be enough in a lot of people to, to change. Um, so a short term reoccurring fear and it has to be present and real. So if somebody says, well, I'm afraid I might get fired if I don't achieve this. Well, if that's their fear and they don't achieve it, being fired has to be a demonstrable thing that happens within that business for that to be a real fear. My experience um, outside of the US is people fear being fired, but they're never fired. And therefore, it's not a real fear. It's not one worth even contemplating as a short term reoccurring fear. So a short term reoccurring fear, something that will happen now as a consequence of not achieving, not making the change. Number three is the complete opposite. It is a long term, compelling, positive future reason. I'm going to get a massive bonus at the end of the year if I do achieve. And if I don't achieve the fear above, I won't get it. Um, uh, uh, I'm going to get recognition, I'm going to get a promotion and promotions in this workplace happen on merit, not on who we like and who's been here longest and whatever else. But the individual needs to have a long term positive reason for change that can happen and will happen as long as they make the change. Now, it can't be a theory thing. This actually has to happen. As a business, you get one opportunity with a person to give them a long term 12 or 24 month compelling reason, if you do not meet it, they will never believe that to be true again. So you're done. Um, and you just burnt that bridge. So a long term compelling positive reason to change. And number four, and this is where change often falls apart, is a series of short term achievable wins that are easy to reach and easy to maintain. Easy, simple steps Remember that to knock over the uh, Empire State Building, if you knock over a five millimetre high by a 1.5 millimetre high domino now, each domino can knock over one 1.5 times its size. And the chain reaction the dominoes carries on. After 29 dominoes, you've knocked over the Empire State Building. So we have to start small. We have to start very practical. We have to start not thoughtful, practical, 
and not thoughtful and practical, small, achievable, to-do, in-diary steps now. Now, we get those four things in place. Change will happen. We've got the carrot, we've got the stick, we've got the reason, and we've got the level of achievability that we can start with. Small, simple, two or three easy steps. Change will happen and you will see either change in yourself or change in uh, the business in a very, very short period of time. The change that you want. So that's it. Changing factors. Let's get them in place. Create the environment or remember somebody will create the environment for you. Cool.